A.H. Brandon says, this is the worst possible thing just happened in audio sometimes hide your feelings in Russian. <laughs> Episode 3, guys. Go give him a like first before we start. Go sub to your channel if you haven't. Let's check out what Mr. Brandon has to say. So, this is bad. And is it? that ain't no exaggeration. We knew there was a childhood friend who yep. taught this guy Russian. We knew that. Did the childhood friend teach him Russian? I thought that he learned Russian so that he could talk to her. Um, a lot of anime would go the route that either A, that person gets brought back into the cast at some point, causes a bit of a ruckus, because, you know, current Russian wannabe girlfriend, you know, it's it's a bit of a love triangle in that. You know, long lost love and new it love, is. which one does he pick? It's weird, because, like, it was a love triangle at the beginning with Yuki and Arya, but then with Yuki being, you know, related to... You know, Masachka, I feel like she, even though obviously they're going to tease, they're going to do a lot of fan service and try to have these moments where they could seem together. I just don't think she's really in the running. Like she is in the competition, but I don't think of her as an actual contestant because of that reveal, which is actually smart in my opinion, because that kind of diffuses the situation of a love triangle being formed and for unnecessary drama. So it became Masachka and Arya. And then Masha showed up. And then suddenly it's back to a triangle and it's even worse than before because now it's a fucking sister on sister battle. But Masha is almost like a childhood friend, pretty much. And childhood friends always lose. And Masha, the, the thing that I'm worried about is that Masha will probably be, uh, she's going to back out of the race. She's not going to compete. She knows how much Masachka loves Arya and vice versa. And I, I don't think she's gonna do anything. And then she'll suffer in silence, which I think is gonna happen. And that's the thing that sucks. Unless he's gonna pull a Mashoku Tensei and become a dual wielder, I mean, someone's heart's gonna get broke. <laughs> and technically, that does happen, but it's worse than. I don't think a harem is gonna form in this series, though. In this. Now, sometimes they like to go the route that the person that they're in love with from mm. the past is also the person they may be falling in love with in the present. Seemed unlikely that was going to be the case with Ola, but, um, her sister. Yeah, her sister. Her sister seems sweet as hell, man. She is. Immediately when she starts realizing who it is, she's like, she pulls away because she doesn't want to hurt her sister. But, uh, yeah, yep. that's 100% our boy. Like, it's just she knew him by a different name back in the day. Yeah, and, and like... The more I think about it, what Brandon just said kind of makes sense of like he pulled away and I'm not exactly sure which scene he's talking about, but I'm assuming the scene when this scene exactly on the screen where he's holding Masachka's hand and he's like, Masachka, sa? What's your, what's Sakun? Hold up. And then she spoke in Russian to Masachka, but the Masachka just like played dumb and did not respond in Russian. And at that point, during the time of recording the reaction, I thought, oh, Masha is now going to be like, okay, it's not him because Masachka being dumb or smart, whatever you think that is. But it could also be that she already knew. And now, even though he didn't answer back in Russian, she was like, oh, it must be him. So I'm going to have a fake smile and back away for the sake of my sister. And unless you're a blind man, hell, I'm pretty sure a, bl I'm pretty sure a blind man would be a... Well, actually... You can't see the eyes here. There's a glaring light covering this pendant picture. And the biggest troll would be that it's actually not Masachka. That would be an insane troll. Like to set all this shit up, it is so obvious that it's Masachka and Masha back in the day. But could you imagine? Could you fucking imagine? Like based on the recent episodes, I can imagine. And if they did that, fuck it. Let's, let's ball. This is Masachka's twin, bro. There's a twin brother that none of you fucking knew about. Yup. Do it. I don't care. Make it crazier. Go to see this. Both our MC and the sister both had the nostalgia feeling. This ain't just some simple, oh, it reminds me. No, it's it's it's, it's true him. and it's pain. But what a good freaking episode. Full live reactions over on Patreon if you want Check to see it out. look at thought. Any of these episodes are gonna be over there exclusively. So um I really think that in order for Brandon to like have Patreon incentive, like you cannot be just doing reviews and plugging your Patreon. And like he has a lot of members actually. 504 paid members is no fucking joke. With the ratio of 933, sorry you guys can't see this right now. But I see like other people, like even Chibi, they have like Patreon, but because they're like a review channel, most people don't even know. Most people don't even know how they react, so their Patreon pull is kind of like weak, but like 
having like an alt channel where you upload the edited reactions would probably do well too, but I don't know. Maybe he doesn't have enough time because he like min maxes these eight minute videos too. Maybe he's got other shit going on and the operation is already too tight. But I see so many huge channels with a very lackluster Patreon because their strategy just isn't marketed towards specifically what they're offering on Patreon. But we're getting off topic. Um, first thing I want to say, and I thought it was going to be my main talking point before the whole reveal with the sister, is that this show doesn't have a traditional formula. When you look at episode one, yeah. it kind of function in a way, it's like, okay, you're, pro at least for me, I'm walking in thinking, okay, it's going to be a pretty typical school series with this twist that the girl speaks Russian. But the mm -hmm. feel of it, the formula of it, it wasn't the stiff, boring show. It kind of had a bit of, it had a fun little spice, nothing too crazy, but it was different. Episode two, Truck Coon came in and decided to drop. Bombshell. Yuki. Yeah, it was like a parody. It was a parody. It was a comedy. It was just peak fun. And I think it's the best out of the three episodes. But episode three... Yeah, episode two is probably the most fun so far. Episode three was really good too, though. It is a very close second um, to best episode because it functions super serious with everything that we get with the flashback and how the love started building, right? It's two sisters talking about how did you fall in love with this <laughs> guy, right? And then the second half comes in with that twist. And it's yeah. just like... The show is actually- They fucking buttered us up in the first half with the backstory. Why do you even like this indifferent slacker? I thought you hated them. And then we go to the backstory, what Masatsuka did for, you know, Arya. And basically taught her to be like Ayana Koji, not really. And then they had the first win and they did the dance and it was all good. And I was like, wow, they're meant to be. And then the bombshell hits of like, oh shit. The childhood friend back in the day was actually Masha. So it's like, uh-oh, uh-oh. But- I just don't think Masha's gonna compete, man. I don't think so. I think Masha's gonna step out of the competition while getting cucked silently, which is gonna be so sad. Actually unpredictable. Even if you could say, oh, I expected the, the old Russian so funny. girlfriend was gonna pop back up. Hell, even if you thought she had a sibling and it might be that dy dynamic. It's like the way they structure these episodes, it doesn't follow a formula. Like, for a, a long time, school anime used to be very easy to predict. Almost every school anime started off with the soccer pedals falling off the trees. <laughs> There's always going to be a beach episode by episode six, seven, or eight. You know, like culture festival, summer mountain ocean episode, summer festival, kimono yukata, fireworks drowning out the sounds of the confession, New Year's. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there, that's all there. Yeah, I, I get what he's saying for sure. Uh, so far, Ro I, I've seen my ha handful of rom-coms. Not as many as isekais, obviously, because we're, we're a fucking shitty isekai channel. But the rom-coms, I've seen quite a bit. And I think he's right. It's definitely catching me off guard. Now, like, it wasn't that crazy, right? It, it, like, it was either going to be Masha or Arya. And I thought it was going to be Arya and her hair changed just because of the IQ. It could have definitely been Masha. It's not that crazy, but the fact that it is Masha is like, oh, fuck, what's going to happen now? Like, there's always a, a school event, like a fair of some sort, right? But it's the fact that this show is just so unexpected. And when you take a look at what the poster image for the show is, like, I'll, I'll show it. When I Let's saw this on live chart... Mm. We got one more girl, by the way. The maid has yet to show up yet. It looked like the most generic freaking school show I've ever seen. The poster is garbage. <laughs> I'm going to be it? blunt with this because it... Is it garbage? I mean, how much could they really make a rom-com poster to get you engaged? I see really colorful, beautiful waifus. I don't know. I thought it, it definitely doesn't like it's, it doesn't stand out. I guess the character designs might like stand out, but I don't know. It's I it's all right, I guess. It just looks predictable, cliche bullshit. Yet this show is actually one of the better produced ones in terms of both structuring of its narrative, but also just how actually different and unique this show feels. It's so different than anything you're probably expecting. Because they're speaking Russian. And the fact that you are legitimately building this very cute dynamic between two people, one of which who once in a while says some cute shit in Russian, but in general, they actually do talk with each other. It's just she's the type of person that after she clearly has stronger feelings, she gets a little, she tries to push back a little. She tries to make it be like, no, I'm not actually interested. 
Some people aren't good with receiving or giving compliments, and you know, she's the type of person like that. And I like the fact that from the flashback, I actually appreciate that we have our MC who's actually like that moment after they exchange, like, hey, you can have, like, you can call me this name. It will be an exclusive for me. The nickname, Three other boys come in, we want to have a dance, and he's like, sorry, boys, she's taken. It's just like, there's this boldness, there's this confidence to it. And then they sideswipe you with the sister shit, man. Honestly, mm -hmm. at some point, these two are going to have to have a conversation. They're going to have to realize. I mean, they both, for her, I'm pretty sure. Well, why did he dodge the question? Right? Why did he dodge the rush? Because he knows rush. And like, he dodges it for Adia because like, obviously, if we just, it's funny. The longer that we don't let her know, the, the funnier this gag is going to be of her saying all this, you know, shit that we shouldn't be hearing right but she says it confidently in russian because she thinks that we don't understand but masha is a different example of like the fuck why would you do that for a masha specific well no 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 it makes sense because if you told the bigger sister of adia that he knows russian then obviously she's gonna tell adia and then the secret will be up no that makes a lot of sense actually i didn't even think about that holy shit it makes like a lot of sense actually sure she's a hundred percent sure for him he's confused because it's this nostalgic feeling of comfort that he once had minus the t going down his backside um, so the idea that at some point something's going to slip up, and I would actually believe it if the slip up happens between them sooner than the slip up happens with Allah and her realizing that he... <laughs> Allah? My, indeed, my favorite waifu, Allah. Um, I hope the slip up happens with Arya and Masha in the same place at the same time. She needs to be there. We need to have another fucking nuclear bomb go off, bro. The reveal needs to happen with both sisters present. I'm down. You can also speak Russian. At some point, the cats are going to be out of the bag, and it's someone's heart's not going to be received well, right? Masha, man, I'm telling you, she's going to get cucked so hard. At the end of the day, I doubt this man's going to try to dual wield sisters. I don't Probably get the not. impression it's that kind of anime. Welcome to be proven wrong. But uh, most likely, uh, enough time has passed new current feelings. Mm -hmm. That's what's going to happen. But only time can tell. But uh, this show is a surprise it really is it's wonderfully produced yeah i mean a lot of people are hyping this show up and i'm like why are you guys getting so excited about this rom-com bro it's just a rom-com but russian it's not really the russian that matters it's it's a nice little twist to it it's a nice little difference that other animes i guess doesn't do but the russian isn't really the reason why i'm watching this it's just the way that they keep me on my toes of trying to think of like, oh, who's that girl? Who is this? There's these mysteries that I'm actually engaged with. All the designs of the girls are beautiful. And I genuinely want to see this cold ice princess, Ma you know, Adia, eventually realize that everything that she said in Russian could be her, but Masat's going to be just a fun time. And every episode has been really fun. Like, of all the rom-coms I've seen, I would put this shit near Kaguya Summit here. Maybe it's a bit too early. But it's been three episodes. And they've shown me enough to make me think that, like, it's in that league of different rom-coms where I don't think it's mid. It's, like, genuinely fun and engaging. Fun fact, another rom-com that I loved, one season handled everything from beginning to confession and ending up with, like, a pair. Tomo-chan is a girl. I will stand on this hill and die with the take that Tomo-chan is a girl is an S-tier rom-com that delivered so much in one season compared to any other rom-com that stalls. I understand Tomachan is a girl is a different manga format. It's like four coma or something. And the lack of, you know, content compared to other long running series is why I could do all those things in one season. But if we're talking about anime rom coms, Tomachan is a girl, absolutely peak. And it just when you look at that poster, man, I mean some people are gonna say I'm overreacting, but that poster gives me the most boring school vibes possible. And every episode it almost acts like it's a different style of school anime, but it just handles it so like elegantly. It's almost like there's a level of confidence to the show that you just don't always see in these types mm. of series. And sometimes you do get side. I hate Angel Next Door, by the way. I hate that shit. Oh, you're so beautiful. Oh, you're so beautiful, too. Oh, wow. I'm gonna cook this for you. Oh, I love you. I love you, too. Shut the fuck up. So cringe. I'm gonna get diabetes watching this shit. I need more calm than rum. The moment that it goes all rom, there is no calm in R Angel Next Door. Angel, there's no calm. It's just rom and drama. I hate that shit. I genuinely, it makes me disgusted inside when I watch that shit. I'm like, ugh. It's way too fucking sweet. I much prefer, that's why I love Kaguya Sama so much.
because it focuses on the comedy and all the crack shit happening rather than just melodramatic little lovey-dovey bullshit, bro. I swept by a show such as The Dangers of My Heart or a show like this, where it's just like, okay, at face value, you think, uh, you know, it's just going to be another, oh, wait, no, this is something. I'm going to lie. He just made a comment. He just made a comment about Dangers in My Heart. Listen to this. Show that you just don't always see in these types of series. And sometimes you do get sideswept by a show such as The Dangers in My Heart. Or I think The Dangers in My Heart is incredibly mid so far. And hear me out. We're on episode four. Like, people have been glazing this show like crazy. And it's been four episodes. And it's been the most incredibly mid rom com I've seen so far. I'm, I'm not even baiting right now. Like, you guys have glazed this shit to be a next level rom-com, yet I've, I haven't seen a single thing that this show has done different in other rom-coms that makes me think that it's good. And I don't think we're at that point yet. I don't think that we're at that point where people are expecting, like, like people are expecting for a, a turning point to happen. And it hasn't happened yet. The first three episodes is him just trying to figure out what, what is he even feeling. And now in episode four, Yamada actually wants to hang out with Ichikawa. So I'm thinking the turning point will happen pretty soon. But like, so far, I honestly don't understand why people have hyped up this anime so much. But I'm just going to guess that it's the shit. It's backloaded. Something else happens. Or you motherfuckers are just saying shit like, oh, just season two, trust me. But it's like Yosakura all over again. Man, it's so peak. You just, just, dude, season one, part one, core one. Nah, it's all set up, bro. It, it gets so good. It gets so good. Well, the difference right now is that Dangerous in My Heart actually gets the numbers. Yosakura, there was never numbers. It was just fucking five delusional schizos that are manga readers that just glazed the show over and over and got the expectations up to a point where it couldn't even ever deliver. Dangerous in My Heart's different. A lot of people are actually watching Dangerous in My Heart right now, which makes me think that, okay, okay, it is actually going to be peak later on. It's just right now, first four episodes, it's like a seven out of ten so far. I'm, I'm expecting to get into 8 or 9. So far, it's just been like, alright. I don't really find anything special about this. It's decent. It's for sure not bad. It's decent. But like, I'm waiting for that moment. Or a show like this. Where it's just like, okay, at face value, you think, uh, you know, it's just gonna be another, oh wait, no, this is something special. I already want to see a season 2. I think 12 Connie. episodes isn't gonna be nearly enough to scratch the itch that a show like this is delivering me. And uh, if they need to keep it, I'm okay if they want to make the Blu-ray box art this girl's feet from episode one. <laughs> do do whatever you got to do to make that moolah because this show deserves multiple episodes. Though I do secretly hope there's at least one anime fam. I'm going to imagine it's a small handful that are still baited by episode one. They're, they're thinking they're signing up for the foot fetish anime. They're, they're like, oh, here we go. We finally got that feet anime. And then they never see feet again, and it's fantastic. <laughs> I was told last week, and I just wanted to... wonder if there's any people actually like that. That was like, oh my god, feet anime, let's keep watching, and they never get feet again. Nah, I don't... If you're specific, I don't think anyone... Then again, there's a lot of degenerates. You never know, man. You really never know. Bring this quickly up. Uh, if we remember the final outfit that was shown uh, during the whole ch uh, changing montage... I hear that this outfit... Even the anime, it seemed a bit modest to think that it was too, like, lewd. In the anime, they said it was lewd, but I was like, it seems modest. In the manga, apparently, it was, like, totally different. Like, completely different. Turns out, in the source material, that initial last outfit is a lot more spicy. So Show the me anime it. toned it down, which does Show explain me it. Because their reaction to the last outfit was like, that's such a tame outfit. Like, yeah, it was so nuclear, but I'm like, it just looks like business casual summer outfit for ladies to me. Like, it was vanilla like there was worse outfits prior to that so it turns out the anime actually downplayed it so yeah you want to see what it actually looked like Aria, Nian. Material. uh but great episode i would say right now for me episode two followed by three followed by one is sure. the order of best to worst and i'm not saying episode one was bad if episode one was bad i wouldn't have continued watching it but that's how i'm ranking it. so i think we're at a Fair. pretty good stage with this show and uh quite the bombshell to drop by episode three but i appreciate that they didn't Beat around the bush, drag it out, make us go nine episodes and, you know, then sneak it in or something. Makes <laughs> The mystery? Yeah, I, I am kind of surprised that they handled the, uh, the mystery already, right? They could have definitely stalled and milked that shit and maybe it would have been more interesting for me to keep, you know, schizo theorizing what could have happened and they could have keep teasing and hinting and what could have happened. But wonder what's going to happen now, right? If they're going to show the cars this early, it means that they have plans to work Masha into the plots. I'm, I just don't know 
how it's going to be done and whether or not, you know, she's going to suffer. Hopefully she doesn't. It makes a lot more sense to do it like this, but goddamn. But those are my feelings, of course. Let me know what you're thinking of uh, the twist, the different type of formula that they're rolling with, because this show isn't playing by the traditional school rules. So let me know what you're feeling down below. Be sure to yes, like sir. and enjoy it. Subscribe if you're around here, of course, ring that. Y'all know what to do. Please go give Mr. H. Brandon. Like on his video, sub to his channel if you haven't. I am thoroughly enjoying Roche Dera right now. Of course, it helps that every week Roche Dera is just the highest performing series. And, you know, YouTube numbers go up. You know, my brain also goes, woo! Oh my god, it just feels good. But beyond that, it's actually a genuinely good anime that I'm actually excited for every code. And I just hope that Masha doesn't lose. It, nah, she's gonna lose. I just hope that Masha doesn't get hurt. I hope... Some other dude steps in for Masha, right? It, this can easily be solved if there's another dude that steps in for Masha. Maybe that's uh, Masasuka's other twin, right? We gotta... You never know, man. It's, it, you, you never know. What if he has a twin? You didn't see the eyes independent? Nah, it's probably Masasuka, but I'll see you next time.